Welcome to all, to all the classic car enthusiasts, particular Mini enthusiasts, and I know this is not a Mini, it's an E-Type, but I'm going to have a little rant like, uh, like Martin Butler does for, for a minute before I tell you actually what I've been doing to the Mini. I went out to them, my wife uh, went to our other home in Vienna yesterday, so as a single man I thought I need milk, I need bacon, eggs, bread, cigarettes, some alcohol. I'm here for three days on my own. So I went, decided to go shopping. I thought, I'll take the E-Type out for a quick run. Now, bearing in mind Austria, the, the driving standards here are excellent. Worldwide, I've worked all over the world and there's atrocious places to drive. But in Austria, I must admit, they're very, uh, they're very good that everybody lets everybody in and so on. But one thing I really have a problem with, and it's a big rant, my wife goes mental about it, about me going on about it, is why is it that people in, uh, in shopping uh, car parks can't park in between two white lines? I, I just don't understand it. Is it pure laziness? Is it lack of thought? Is it bad driving skills? Is it stupidity? I don't understand it because why they can't just... And even if you have to sweep in, you can just reverse up a little bit and park straight because for everyone that parks at an angle, everybody else has to park at an angle and somebody's car gets damaged or whatever. I have a real, real issue with it. I hope it's not just me. It's just not me getting old and cranky and, and less tolerant of people's stupidity. But my God, I, I just don't understand it. Anyway, that's rant over. Time for the mini. But uh, she went, it was only six Ks I went, but it was lovely. Nice, nice car to go shopping in. Doesn't carry a lot, but apart from that, it's nice to drive. Anyway, I'll pick the camera up and I'll show you what we've been doing with the mini. So, sorry about the rant. Anyway, here we go. So, I've been working on the on the Mini for around, excuse me, I'll just get rid of this cigarette. I've been working on the Mini for about, uh, I don't know, two, three hours, something like that. I've got one side done of the arches and I've put, this is not the bumper for it, I just, it's just sitting there. Uh, and so is the one on the front. I think this is off the black Mini, or what was the red one, the half one that's in, that I've made the mini bar out of in the pergola. I'm um, sure that's off it. It's a bit corroded on this, so I'll probably get new ones. And I do like the overriders. Um, but just to show you, so I've fitted this side. They're all bolted up. And as you can see, this is off what was the red mini. Again, the one, if you see some of my other videos, with the mini bar uh, that I have in the pergola, the half car, which is a hinge on it. Um, and you can see now why I've done it this way. This is obviously an old one, it's rusted inside but I could use it as a, as a guide. And there's only one clip on it there and up there. And you can see these clips are pretty badly corroded. I just got them out, so. Anyway, uh, so that's why I wanted to do it that way. Rather than have a big hole in it, you can actually see where the hole is supposed to be cut and you can see that's not quite right. Um, so every one of these minis has its own, you know, uh, um, what could you say? It's only shaped to a certain extent, but you can see that's a nice fit now. That's got it. I've got it bolted through there with a big, strong, heavy bolt, uh, and you can see it looks looks quite nice, right? And it's in line with the door. I can move it back slightly if I need to, uh, and it's nice. It fits nice right in the centre. Um, and like I say, these these uh, uh, when, when I put these up initially with the old ones, this. Uh, was in the, the sorry the old wings was in the wrong position they were further back here I don't know why these are heritage wings and they're correct this is right in the center of this piece anyway you can see it's quite a nice fit the bumpers just sat on there it's not hang on, it's not just it's just sat on there you can see that's going to fit reasonably nice it's a little high but perhaps once it, you can see there once it's bolted down it's going to be quite nice and it's quite flush and that's without any any uh, uh, the the T piece, which is this this black sealant, no, not sealant, but black um, rubber that goes in there. Again, with this one, what I've done there, this is the old one from the the original mini. You can see how badly corroded it is, and it's not sitting on very well. Um, again, I've just put this bumper on. It's, it's it's just sitting on it, but I've cut a little piece out there in the corner, so it fits in there nice. And you can see it fits well all the way around. Um, and of course with the rubber in it as well which will make it look even nicer and again it's it's tight up against here and it's not too too big the hole what I found was the best way to do this was 
because every 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 panel is going to be a little bit different. What I actually did was is lined it up with the holes, bolted it up, uh, I drilled this hole, and I made the hole in the fiberglass slightly bigger than the hole in the sill for this uh, special anchoring bolt. Um, and then what I did was is I put this bolt in tight, so it was tight up against here, it was flush. And this pushed the arch, you can imagine this pulled the arch out of it. So what I did was I slowly pushed the arch in and I could see where it was contacting and then I started to, to put, put marks on it and, and, and take it out. And the tool I used for that, which is a brilliant bit of kit, uh, is this. I have one uh, woodwork one, which is a Black & Decker electrical one, but this is, this, this, is the, this is the business. This is a great bit of kit. Um, and obviously the roll lock. Uh, a cut off tool and you might also see I use that little spanner that little uh, combination spanner for tightening up the the bolts on the back and the reason I did that you might think well why not use a a wrench like that one which is what I use for tightening these and the problem is is <coughs> the fiberglass and the metal uh, thread pieces attached with fiberglass inside you can see hang on you can see there and they're quite flimsy. You can see there's really not a lot of surface area on there. And if you pull too hard on them, you'll just snap them right out. What I will do now is, if you can see there, there's a gap between the back of the metal and the metal wing. So what obviously you need to do is put spacers in between them. Again, there's a perfect example. So well, the, best thing, the best thing to do is put this, a spacer, put them on, check what the spacer is, and then you glue them in place, much, which might even stop it rusting and it will stop it pulling this out of 90 degrees or or, uh, or it's shearing. And as I say, the reason I used this little spanner was because most spanners, or most combination spanners or open enders, doesn't matter, uh, are normally made, the length is made to fit the size of the nut, like if it's a, uh, you know, a, a 2BA nut or whatever it might be. These are metric, obviously. Um, and the purchase you get is relevant to the length of the sh of the of the le leverage of the of the shaft. So you, you know you could use that, but the power you can put in that, in comparison to this, is is a lot. Le this is a lot less. So probably a better way to do it. What I will be doing, they're just fitted on there now with normal nuts. What will go on there will be nylocks, um, so that they don't come off. I could even if I if I can't find nylocks the right size, what I could do is put a second nut on it. And, and lock the nuts together so that they can't come off. But you can see that they're extremely solid. Uh, yeah, um, I can say I think that's quite nice. And that, that was just a few minutes, just because it's not the real one. And as I say, there's only one clip on it. The rest is out. You can see it's not in there properly. Um, but just to see how it's going to go. Anyway, so I've done that side. I had to take this piece out here, as you can see, to make it fit correctly. And again, on the other side, this is not fitted, but you can see where I've put the lead load in here is going to be an issue. So I'll just pop this, offer this up if I can do it without dropping it again. And you can see there where it's catching. So now what I have to do is put a, I put a marker scriber line in there and then take that back in so that this can sit right against as you can see, it's so far away. Um, the only thing I don't like about these arches is uh, quite, they're quite reasonably good fit on the back. You can see there that bump is catching it. It's not this, and it's not this right bumper. But anyway, the only thing I don't like about them is that there. I think that's a little bit, a bit ugly. I'm not sure what I can do about that. Not a lot, I don't think. Maybe a mud flap or something might be the might be the way to go. Yeah, possibly a mud flap across here might be quite nice. It'll just break that up a little bit. Or yeah, maybe up here and across. Nice little Cooper mud flap. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching in. That's it for today. Uh, do some more tomorrow. And uh, yeah, hope you hope you enjoyed the video and got something from it. Uh, there's lots of people who've got videos on these things, but uh, to me, take your time. I've had these things on and off more than a more than a hooker's drawers, so, uh, hooker's underpants, or panties, whatever. Anyway, bye for now, take care, bye.